Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the calculation method for calculating a resultant vector in the context of displacement. So let's get started. We'll now move on to the calculation method, which is again a way to find the resultant vector or resultant displacement in this example. So we want the magnitude and the direction of the displacement. And based on the students that I've taught, this seems to be the more preferred method as opposed to using the scale diagram method. So again, we've got a list of bullet pointed steps here, but I'm just going to show you the exact same example of me driving in the Fiat 500 so that we can see we get roughly the same answers using the calculation method. So here's our example, Mr. Mitchell travels 500 meters east and then 600 meters north in his old baby blue Fiat 500 pop. So the same example we had before. And it says find the resultant displacement of the car by calculation. So instead of using scale diagram this time, it wants us to do it by calculation. And you might be thinking that since we've got a right angle triangle, we're going to be using Pythagoras. So the first step is to sketch a diagram of the vector addition and label the sides. So we don't need an accurate diagram drawn with a ruler, but it often helps to start with a little sketch on your page just to see what the vectors are doing. So if we sketch the 500 meters east, this vector here, and then the 600 meters north, this vector here, then we're joining them nose to tail and we can draw on the resultant vector. So we've got this going from starting point here to the finishing point here with our double arrow. We can then label the sides, so we've got 500 meters and 600 meters, and I've called those sides A and B, and then I've called the hypotenuse, i.e. the resultant vector C in this case. I've then got a right angle triangle labeled here, and my angle theta, which remember is always next to the starting point. So there was my first vector and the starting point, so the angle theta must be in here. It then says use Pythagoras to find the magnitude of the unknown side. So we can use c squared equals a squared plus b squared to find the magnitude of the side c that we've labeled. So it shows that here. So it says to find magnitude, we can do c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So that's the same as 500 squared plus 600 squared, which gives us 610,000. And if you then square root that in your calculator, we can find the size of c, which is 781 meters. The next step is to use trigonometry, i.e. Sokotoa, to find the direction, i.e. the angle. So we can use tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, and it's always going to be tan theta, not sine theta or cos theta, it's always tan theta that we use. Because we'll find that when we do this, we always have the opposite and the adjacent sides. So to find the angle, first of all, we do tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, which if we look at the triangle, we have our angle theta there. So opposite the angle is 600 and adjacent to the angle is 500. So we have 600 over 500, which if you put into your calculator gives you 1.2. And then to get theta, we need to do inverse tan. Or in your calculator, if you've got a Casio, you can do shift and then tan of 1.2 to get tan to the minus one of 1.2 which if you put into your calculator gives you 50.2 degrees. Now remember, just because we've got an angle, that doesn't mean we've got a direction. We then need to use our angle to work out the direction. So next we work out the direction from the sketch and state this as either an angle with compass points or a bearing, just like we did for the scale diagram method. And then same as before, we want to state the final answer and this should have both the magnitude and direction. So because we know this is 50.2 degrees, we could say that our resultant displacement is 781 meters at an angle of 50.2 degrees north of east. We've got north up here, this red arrow is pointing east, so that means we can describe where the resultant vector is as 50.2 degrees north of east. Or in bearings, we can say it's 781 meters at a bearing of 040, just like we saw in the example using the scale diagram method. And again, that's because we start at 000 at north and we come round until we get to the resultant vector. And if this is roughly 50.2 degrees in here, then this is going to be 39.8 degrees in here. But I've rounded it up to 40 to give us a bearing of 040 because we can't use decimal points with bearings. Lastly, part B says, how does this compare with your answer to part B from the previous example? Well, just a reminder from the previous example, remember we got 780 meters at 50 degrees north of east or 780 meters at a bearing of 040. So we've actually got a very similar answer using the calculation method. So we can say the answers are very similar, but you'll have seen that the calculation method provided a more precise answer in terms of the magnitude. We got 781 meters as opposed to 780 meters, and we got a slightly more accurate angle from doing a calculation. 
So the fact we can get a slightly more precise answer using the calculation method and the fact it's usually quicker to do calculations than draw a scale diagram are reasons why a lot of students prefer this calculation method over the scale diagram method. But remember, you can choose whichever one you prefer in order to answer questions asking to calculate resultant vectors of things. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.